Dinosaurs were incredibly diverse and fascinating animals, and the early evolution of this group of organisms is understandably the subject of a great deal of study. Working out how these creatures came to dominate the Mesozoic world and evolved to fill such an enormous range of niches has many implications for understanding macroevolution in general, and so focusing on the early radiation of the amazing dinosaur lineage is highly important. One dinosaur in particular has allowed a remarkable glimpse into the early evolution of the group, while also being situated in the centre of a fascinating debate. Hererosaurus ischigualistensis is a dinosaur that lived at the very start of the late Triassic period, and ever since its discovery has been shrouded in mystery, as well as controversy. The evolutionary relationships of Hererosaurus have been intensely debated over the years, with all sorts of different positions proposed for this animal. Was this creature a theropod, related to the giant carnivores of the Mesozoic? Was it an early sauropodomorph, an ancestral lineage to the largest land animals to ever have existed? Was it an entirely unique branch from the dinosaur family tree? Or was it even a dinosaur at all? All these ideas have been proposed at one time or another, but in recent years it seems to have become a bit clearer what Hererosaurus really was. So let's explore this fascinating prehistoric animal. Hererosaurus was first uncovered in late Triassic aged rocks in Argentina, rocks that actually turned out to be a very significant formation, the Ischigualasto formation. The story of the discovery of the first fossils from this dinosaur is actually pretty interesting, with some quite impressive remains being found and then later overlooked for quite some time. Two expeditions to northwestern Argentina were led by legendary American paleontologist Alfred Romer of Harvard one in 1958 and another in 1964 to 1965. Roma was already 64 years old during this first expedition, and then 70 at the time of the second one, and it was during the 1958 expedition that the first remains of Hererosaurus were found. A beautiful skull and some associated postcranial material were uncovered in blocks, but then upon returning back to Harvard once the expedition had finished, the fossils were unfortunately impounded at the port in Buenos Aires for two years, only getting back to Harvard University in 1960. Once they were back however, no one studied them for quite some time, and so it wasn't realised what these truly were until the early 2010s. After it had become clear that the Ischigualasto formation was a very promising place to find fossils, with not only dinosaurs coming out of this place but also very early dinosaur relatives, other kinds of bizarre reptiles and a variety of synapsids, Argentine paleontologists Osvaldo Rieg and José Bonaparte launched a series of expeditions to Ischigualasto between 1959 and 1964. It was during the 1961 expedition that the back half of the body of a fascinating new animal was uncovered, after a local rancher named Victorino Herrera led the team to the place where he had found the bones. After extracting the fossils, it was then two years later that Rieg published a description of them, naming them as a new genus and species. Rieg named the dinosaur after the discoverer, as well as the formation in which it was found, and so Herrerasaurus ischigualistensis was revealed to the world. At first, Rieg considered Hererosaurus to be a Carnosaurian theropod, but there were some features of the skeletal anatomy that led other paleontologists to disagree, and resulted in a multi-decade long debate over the true identity of this animal. Now, to fully understand the significance of Hererosaurus and the many years of conflict over its placement, it's important to be familiar with the basic main groupings of dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are generally agreed to be split into two main lineages, although this has in recent years come into question as we'll see later. But for now, there are the Sauruscian dinosaurs, including the theropods such as T-Rex and the long-necked sauropodomorphs, and then the Ornithischian dinosaurs, including animals such as Triceratops, Ankylosaurus, Iguanodon, and many many others. Paleontologist Alec Walker in 1964, in a paper investigating the relationships of the Carnosaurian dinosaurs, thought that Hererosaurus should be classified as a kind of early sauropodomorph, saying that it was most similar to Platyosaurus-type dinosaurs. This would have meant that it would be classified within the now outdated group Prosauropoda, now known as the non-sauropod sauropodomorphs, and basically meaning that Hererosaurus would actually represent an ancestral lineage to the famous long-necked sauropod dinosaurs, instead of being an early branch of the theropods. This classification was again supported by Alfred Romer in 1966, in the third edition of his iconic textbook Vertebrate Paleontology, where he said that Hererosaurus might be a member of the Platyosauridae family. In the 14th part of the incredibly useful Handbook of Paleoherpetology series, published in 1970 and focusing on the Sauriscian dinosaurs, Hererosaurus was once again said to be a prosauropod. 1970 also saw the naming and description of Storicosaurus prisei, a late Triassic animal found in Brazil that was recognised to be very similar in many aspects to Hererosaurus, 
The lower jaw, many vertebrae, the hip bones and part of the hind limbs were found of this animal, and it was enough for several paleontologists to realise that it could be a key taxon in figuring out the placement of Hererasaurus. Indeed, in 1973 Storicosaurus and Hererasaurus were then placed in a new family together, named Hererasauridae. This paper disagreed with the assignment of these animals to the sauropodomorph dinosaurs however, but was also cautious about placing them as theropods, suggesting that maybe a whole new infraorder of theropods needed to be created in order to classify these dinosaurs. But then, just as it seemed as though another animal could actually be classified as a close relative of Hererasaurus, another study published in 1977 assigned Storicosaurus to its own family, Storicosauridae, and claimed that Hererasauridae only contained Hererasaurus itself, while also saying that both these families could only be classified as being in an uncertain position within Sauriscians. Skipping forwards to 1987, a paper was published describing a new specimen of Storicosaurus that added some new anatomical data used by the paleontologists to reassess its relationships to Hererasaurus and other dinosaurs. The result of this, though, was to find that Storicosaurus and Hererasaurus were neither theropods nor sauropodomorphs, or indeed Sauriscians at all, and that they also weren't close relatives to each other. Instead, they were positioned as successive sister groups leading up to the branch where the Sauriscian and Ornithischian dinosaurs diverged. But not for long, because then in 1992, Argentine paleontologist Fernando Novas found more anatomical characteristics of the skeletons that suggested Storicosaurus and Hererasaurus were actually very closely related to each other, and the Hererasauridae family could actually include both these animals after all. Novus did agree that Hererasaurids were basal to both Ornithischians and Sauriscians though, and diverged before these other two lineages split off from their common ancestor. However, back in 1988, a joint Argentine-American expedition, including Fernando Novas and well-known American paleontologist Paul Serino, had actually returned to the Ishigualasto formation in order to find more fossils of these important Triassic animals, and had managed to recover some beautiful new specimens of Hererasaurus including an almost complete skull and neck, as well as a second specimen that preserved most of the body. This discovery was reported in a paper published in 1992 by Serino and Novas, in which they described a lot of the anatomy of the parts of this animal that hadn't been able to be studied until this point. In this study, based on the newly recognised skeletal traits of this new material, Serino and Novas argued that Hererasaurus could actually be placed within the theropods, representing a very archaic lineage of these dinosaurs that split off very early on in the evolution of the group. In 1993, Serino and colleagues then named and described the Triassic dinosaur Eoraptor, also from the Ishigualasto formation. In this paper, Serino again argued for a Hererasaurid affinity with the theropods, while also classifying Eoraptor as an even more basally positioned theropod. Eoraptor is now of course generally considered to be a sauropodomorph instead, though there's still some disagreement in recent works and it's a whole other story that could be covered by itself. 1993 also saw the publication of a review paper that investigated all the different definitions of dinosaurs as a whole that existed at this time. This work criticised the classification of Eoraptor done by Serino and his colleagues, disagreeing with Hererasaurids as theropods, and arguing that Hererasauridae should not be included as true dinosaurs, instead sitting just outside this grouping. Under this classification scheme, the definition of dinosauria would include just Sauriscia and Ornithischia, and as such exclude more basal groups. Novas then published another study in 1994 that supported the inclusion of Hererasaurids within Dinosauria once again, with many characters found as supporting a Sauriscian affinity. He also found many shared characteristics with the theropods in particular, and in 1996 published a paper in which he performed a large-scale analysis of dinosaur relationships, again finding support for Hererasaurids as theropods. The debate about the position of Hererasaurids continued into the 21st century, and while studies published in 2003 and 2004 supported the inclusion of Hererasaurus as a theropod, other researchers favoured the classification of the dinosaur in a more basal position, as an early Sauriscian. Then in 2009, another very early possible theropod was named and described, Tawa Halai, from the late Triassic of New Mexico, and in the study Hererasaurus was again found to be a theropod, but actually in a more basal position than Eoraptor. 2010 then saw the publication of yet another early Sauriscian dinosaur, Chromogisaurus, also from the Ishigualasto formation. Classified as a sauropodomorph, the phylogenetic analysis performed in this paper actually once again found Hererasaurids to be basal Sauriscians, not included within the theropods. Then, later in 2010, another new species of Hererasaurid was named, San Juan Saurus, again from the Ishigualasto formation. 
In this paper, adding the new anatomical characteristics obtained from the new dinosaur to the phylogenetic analysis done in the study, Herrerasaurids were again found to be placed at the base of Saurischia, outside of the more derived grouping called Eusaurischia. Then we move to 2011, when, to no one's surprise, yet another early dinosaur from the Ischigualasto formation was named and described, another basal theropod called Eodromaeus. Serino was again involved in this paper, and once again the researchers favoured the positioning of Herrerasaurids as true theropods, rather than basal saurischians. In 2014, there was then a study re-examining a kind of middle Triassic dinosaur form called Louisuchus in which another phylogenetic analysis placed Herrerasaurids as outside theropods, but in an unresolved position among the theropods and sauropodomorphs. This brings us up to the 2017 paper that completely shook up the dinosaur family tree, especially when it came to the Herrerasaurids. This paper proposed a new classification scheme for the dinosaurs, putting theropods and ornithischians together in a new grouping called Ornithoskeleda, while Herrerasaurids and Sauropodomorphs were found to be most closely related to one another, and remained as members of Saurischia. In 2019, the world then welcomed another new genus and species of Herrerasaurid, the new taxon Nathovorax cabrieri, which is known from a particularly nice and complete articulated skeleton unearthed in southern Brazil. The completeness of the skeleton allowed paleontologists to gain much more insight into Herrerasaurid anatomy, especially because the endocranial cavity was preserved within the brain case, and so by micro-CT scanning the specimen, the shape of the brain that would once have been present here was able to be examined. Interestingly, Nathovorax also showed that Herrerasaurids were positioned in the ecological roles that would later be taken over by medium to large body-sized theropods, being the original dinosaurs to occupy these carnivorous niches. Nathovorax also added more anatomical details that allowed a more complete phylogenetic analysis, and within dinosaurs as a whole, Herrerasaurids were once again found to be placed as early diverging saurischians, instead of theropods. And that just about brings us up to today, though I'm sure more studies are bound to be on the way which will again change details of their evolutionary relationships. So, as you can see, the history of research on this dinosaur has been an absolute mess, with all sorts of different ideas floated around at one time or another. And that's not even mentioning the other taxa that were described, which are now considered to be synonyms of Herrerasaurus, the genera Ischisaurus, named in 1963, and Franguelisaurus, named in 1986, which are now both considered to just be other examples of Herrerasaurus. However Herrerasaurus should really be classified, there's no denying that this is a fascinating and unique dinosaur. Indeed, the peculiar anatomy of parts of its skeleton are the reason that it's caused such confusion among paleontologists and also why it's such a key taxon in figuring out the early evolution of this iconic group of animals. Herrerasaurus is known from some pretty complete remains, thanks to the many expeditions to Ischigualasto that have recovered a lot of this dinosaur skeleton, and a series of papers published by Serino and Novas in the early 90s detailed much of the anatomy. Herrerasaurus has a very interesting skull, with it being described as lacking nearly all of the specialisations of later dinosaurs. It was quite narrow and low, with a rather rectangular side profile, and the configuration and shapes of the skull openings between the orbits and nostrils are unique in this animal, with one of the openings actually being a feature usually only found in more derived theropods. A particularly notable feature of the Herrerasaurus skull is the presence of a well-developed joint midway along the lower jaw, known as an intramandibular joint, that would have enabled the mandible to flex, and for the front half to rotate down about 15 degrees compared to the back half. Serino and Novas made the comparison of such a feature to some modern anguimorph lizards, which use such a flexible lower jaw in catching live prey, so perhaps Herrerasaurus engaged in similar behaviour. The hands of Herrerasaurus were also probably employed in the catching and subduing of prey items, possessing long and recurved claws on digits 1 to 3 that indicate they were probably effective at grasping. Study of the arms and pectoral girdle of the dinosaur shows that the three clawed digits would have converged upon flexion, ideal for grasping or raking at objects, and various muscle attachment points on the arm bones support this idea. Herrerasaurus does actually possess five digits, however the fourth and fifth fingers are very reduced, and they did not have claws on their ends. Another of the mysteries surrounding Herrerasaurus concerns the number of hip vertebrae that are possessed. Although more advanced, or derived, Saurischian dinosaurs generally had at least three vertebrae incorporated into the fused sacrum, Herrerasaurus appears to only have two. This is a very basal condition among dinosaurs, and was one of the main features that led many researchers to consider it as a very primitive Saurischian, or even outside Dinosauria. 
However, others, such as Sereno and Novas, argued that this just indicates that the Sauruskians and Ornithischians must have independently evolved to incorporate more than two vertebrae into the sacrum, as they support Herrerasaurus' position as a theropod. So we've looked at all the different positions that Herrerasaurus has been placed in, as well as some of the anatomical features that make this animal so intriguing. But what about the environment in which it lived? The Ishigualasto formation has been absolutely invaluable in elucidating some of the mysteries shrouding the early diversification of the dinosaurs, and this locality was also home to a whole variety of other amazing organisms. Exposed today within a 50 kilometer long valley in northwest Argentina, this formation represents an environment that was once a floodplain, with evidence of ancient rivers, as well as indications that various volcanic eruptions occurred here resulting in ash layers within the formation. Dating to between 232 and 225 million years old, other inhabitants of the Ishigualasto formation include various early dinosaurs, such as the previously mentioned Eoraptor, Tromogisaurus, Eodromaeus, and San Juansaurus, as well as another basal sauropodomorph called Panphagia, named in 2009. All sorts of archosauromorph reptiles lived in this environment too, including the massive Saurosuchus, which was likely the top predator of Ishigualasto. Synapsids were prevalent here too, animals related to the ancestors of mammals, with a great diversity in size ranging from absolutely tiny forms all the way up to the massive dicynodont named Ishigualastia. Temnospondyls, relatives of modern amphibians, are also well documented from the formation, as is a range of plant life. Herrerasaurus is therefore an intriguing member of the dinosaur lineage, with some unique quirks of its anatomy that's made it an absolute nightmare for paleontologists to classify. But its position as an early diverging member of the dinosaur lineage makes the study of this animal imperative to understanding how this group of animals came to dominate the terrestrial ecosystems of the Mesozoic world. Well, I really hope you enjoyed learning about this remarkable, mysterious dinosaur and the history of how it sent paleontologists absolutely mad. Thank you for also continuing to support the channel and the content we're making, especially the new longer form videos we're creating, which I'd recommend going and checking out if you haven't already. In this new series that we're trying out, I, along with two of my friends and fellow paleontology students at university with me, discuss the latest in paleontological news, explore various topics in more detail than we would in our usual videos and have much more discussion about them, and talk about our own research on the prehistoric animals we're studying for our university work. We're also planning to film a lot of our fossil hunting trips, as well as our visits to various museums and sites of paleontological interest, and we've also got some plans to interview paleontologists about their work. The first episode is already up, and although it's a little rough around the edges, it's been very fun to experiment with this new format, and we're very open to any suggestions and feedback that you're able to provide. We really want to include as much audience participation as we can too, and we'll be doing some votes as to what topics we should cover next or places we should visit, so please do come and join in. We've also got a very fun and much improved second episode on the way very soon, so be sure to catch that. Anyway, thank you for watching, and thank you especially to our patrons, including our dinosaur tier supporters Amanda von Nordek, Archianthus, Clara Middleton, Daniel Ingraham, Dhruv Srivastava, Gary Arrington, George Vodgetek, Greg Silvernale, Corey Peterson, Loxy Poo, Mendicant Fryer, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Nicole Bueno, Persian Boy, Ralph Balzac, Robert Thomas, and Steve Bradshaw. If you would like to find out more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you think we deserve it, and if you would like to see more from us.